life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. I came so you can have life more abundant, life more abundant with me. Always abounding and filled with my goodness, life overflowing, you'll see. Spirit of the Lord is flowing through me, proclaiming the good news to all in me. Well, welcome to everybody joining us today in the Z Church. It is a real privilege to have you today. Shortly, Pastor Loretta will be sharing the message, Exceedingly Abundantly Beyond. Oh, I'm so excited. What an exciting title that is. I know you will be blessed today by the word and that what we bring that she will be bringing forth. Later, we'll be, we will be celebrating communion during the service. So please prepare bread or cracker and juice or water to be used at this time of the service. We encourage you to leave a comment with feedback about the service today. We appreciate your comments. We hope you join us for the Afterglow Fellowship immediately following the service. Anna, would you take us into prayer? Thank you, Dana. Father, we thank you for this service. Thank you for our pastors. And we pray that they may be strength and anointed. Your, your word does not return to you empty. So let the message share today and help on any platform reach and transform lives forever. We thank you to you in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Please, Joseph, lead us in worship. Thank you, Anna. Uh, this song is called Greatness of Our God because it's the greatness of our God that makes him able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask for a thing according to the power that works within. Hallelujah. Give me eyes to see more of who you are May what I behold Still my anxious heart Take what I have known And break it all apart For you my God I still No sky contains No doubt all you are the greatness of our God and spend my life to know and I'm far from close to all you are the greatness of our Give me grace to see beyond this moment here To believe that there is nothing left to fear And that you alone are it all For you, my God, are greater still And no sky greatness of our God. I spend my life to know and I'm far from close to all you are. The greatness of our God. The greatness of our God. 
Praise God. Thank you, Joseph. Hallelujah. That was wonderful. Appreciate that time of worship. It's my privilege today to introduce our pastors. They are ministry gifts to the body of Christ and sitting under pastors who honor both the word and the spirit is such a tremendous blessing. I'm grateful for their love, faith, and faithfulness through the years. And most of all, for their spiritual hunger to follow after what the Spirit of God is doing in this hour. Our pastors, Larry and Loretta Huggins. Listen, uh, we've got a great, uh, a great preacher with us today. Uh, Do you uh, want to stand up? Well, sure. I was just going to stay out of the picture a little bit because this lady here is going to bring the word. And it's a great word. I'm excited about it. I want her to take her time. And why don't you uh, say something about your book? That would be great if you could do that. Well, uh, I have a big book. Why don't you say something about my book? Uh, I've read this book several times because I helped with the editing of it. I'll give myself a plug. Cover art by me. And the, That's yeah. the kind of stuff I used to do for Kenneth Hagin. It was and, covers. And, and you did the back cells. Writing and, and editing. So I got to read through it while I was editing it. And it's just a tremendous book. It's easy to read. It's clear. It's deep. And it comes from a, really a lifetime of being raised in a spirit-filled family and attending spirit-filled churches. So Pastor Loretta really knows the Holy Ghost. And she does a good job of explaining how the Holy Ghost can transform your life. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Uh, Dr. John said... Uh, if you're worshiping God, it's the Holy Spirit. If you're in trouble, it's the Holy Ghost. So, you know, we have him. He covers all bases. Now, well, thank you, I Pastor. Want you to, I want you to go to Amazon and uh, and buy this book. It's It's got rave reviews. It's well-researched. It's filled with uh, uh, bibliography and footnotes. Uh, very scholarly work, but in a, in a very conversational tone that you'll enjoy. Good job, Pastor Loretta. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you for your support. Yes, there it is. Holy Spirit, the agent of change. Well, praise God. I have to tell you that was, again, good worship, and thank you so much for your plug, Pastor. What great worship we had in the prayer time was wonderful, and uh, thank you, Gail, for such a nice um, opening for the service. And uh, she says that she's excited to hear the message. So uh, Sister Gail, thank you so much. And just uh, Pastor Sharon, thank you too. And to, to the amazing Z team, Terry and all uh, all of them, I, I, I failed to uh, call all of your names, but even Elder Joy, who is taking care of Facebook. And we say hello, don't we, Pastor, to all the people and the different social medias. And 
even though it's been about two weeks past since we had the miracle uh, event, if you are experiencing a miracles or have, please let us know. Yeah. You know, some people get a miracle and they think miracles instantaneous, you know, like boom. But miracles can be something that are, as Christ said, um, healed as they went. So you know what? As long as God is intervening in your life, that's a miracle. That's right. Because that's what miracles mean. God intervening in your life. Praise well, God. So there, pray. And Elder Tim, thank you for last week. <laughs> Elder Tim was helping me. I kept forgetting I was on camera. I mean, on mic. <laughs> Elder Tim does his job well. Let's all just tell the elder, I mean, uh, Pastor Tim, I mean, Reverend Tim, um, Brother Tim, <laughs> Z Team member Tim. Let's just tell him how much we appreciate him. Hey, Amen. You, Thank Tim. you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Center myself. Pastor's asking me to center myself. I'm centered now. I feel more centered. At my... mm, okay. Well, how many times have you heard someone or have you said, you know, I've heard that before. I know that's often when someone is asking my help. And uh, I will tell them, well, I've done all of that. I did that. I'm doing that. I this, I that. And they say that. And, you, and I understand because I, too, have been guilty of that when uh, I'm needing help and pastor gives me the scripture. I'm like, yeah, I got that. I got that. But right now, that's not what I need. Well, what do you need that's more than the Holy Ghost, the Holy Word. Yes, we need comfort. Yes, we need people to hold our our hands. As you know, we, we chocolate. I did I ever tell you about the time when I was in San Jose? No, I was actually we were living in Washington D.C. at the time, and I was trying to get from one point to another point. I wasn't quite familiar. We had recently moved there, so I was still learning the city. And so, you know, I had uh, Siri and I said, Siri, uh, I named the street. I can't remember what it was, but at the time I called out the street and I'm driving and I had a rent car at the time. So it was a little noisy, I suppose. And um, Siri gave me directions to Germany. And I'm like, okay. So I said, cancel it. And I did a, I did that about three or four times. I, I ended up some from San Francisco. Here I am in Washington, D.C. All I want to do is get from point B to point, uh, from point A to point B, which should take only about 30 minutes. Uh, it gave me uh, to Norway, to Germany, to San Francisco. And finally, because I'm on the highway driving at highway speeds. And uh, finally, out of frustration, I yelled, Siri, you are no help whatsoever. Silence. And then this, and this is the truth. The next thing Siri said, for that emotion, I prescribe chocolate. I'm like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, turned off and went to the nearest, I turned off and went to the nearest um, Starbucks <laughs> and got some uh, a coffee and a brownie. <sighs> It helps praise God. <laughs> so praise God for that. But my point is simply this, that it has been proven that even though we often say, I've heard this before, I've heard that before, repetition is important. Now, let me just read a little bit of a stat here. I have it. I don't know if you can see it, if it works there. There it is, a little stat that I drew up, but I'm going to read it. Within 20 minutes, we, that would be you and I, will forget 40% of what we learn. Now, listen, I'm about to give you some information today. My title is, and you can put that up, Pastor, that is exceeding, um, I mean, yes, exceeding abundantly beyond. I can't put it up. He can't put it up. Well, there you have it. But at any rate, the title of my message today is Exceeding Abundantly Beyond. So I'm going to spend about 30 to 45 minutes telling you about 
how God is able to do far above whatever it is you are asking for. However, with the information that I give you, if I don't repeat it, according to this study, within 20 minutes of having heard the entire message, most of us will forget, if not all of us, 40% of what we heard. Now stay with me. And then it says another 40 minutes after that 40 minutes, so we're talking about maybe 80 minutes, you will have forgotten 60% or uh, 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 half of the 60% you retain. So here, let me just explain myself. First, after the first 20 minutes, I might math was also, I'll do that again. After 20 minutes, you will have forgotten 40%. Now, that means you have 60% that you've retained. But it says in the next 40 minutes, you will have forgotten half of that that you retain. So that's only an hour. Within one hour, you will have forgotten almost 70% of what you heard. Hmm. That's interesting. Amazing. And then the next day, the day later, we will have lost 70% of the 30% we barely held on to. Wow. Maybe that explains why, how many times you've told um, your children and you go through a whole, you know, thing of list. You can't do this. This is why, blah, blah, blah. And five minutes later, they're like, okay, can I do such and such? And you're thinking, didn't I just tell them? It took 30 minutes, if you will, to explain to them why and here they're asking me again. Or better yet, how many of you have ministered, Pastor and I have, spent a whole hour or more ministering the word of God. And the next day, we have people saying, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. You're like, didn't you listen to the message yesterday? Now everyone's very quiet. Well, that's fine. Amen. Go ahead. Bring it. Bring <laughs> it. In. The bring it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. The fact is, you know, I remember once I preached about, you know, God is the healer, the healer, the healer, and um, our taught about God being the healer, and everyone was jumping, hollering, whatever. I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit there. But at any rate, they seem to be responding positively to the message. Then about after the, uh, the service, three or four persons came up. This was a woman's meeting, came up to me and said, you know, I just want you to pray because I, I just don't know if God wants to heal me. You know, I, I had to suck in the air because I'm thinking, weren't you in the line? And didn't I just pray for you? And now you're here 20 minutes later telling me you're not sure God wants to heal. I'm not being, um, what do you call it, critical, but I am wanting you to see how we are all guilty of this. We really are. Yeah. Amen. Teach it. So now we're down to losing 70% of the 30%. We're down, actually, I'll say it again. So within 20 minutes, we lose 40%. And after 40 uh, minutes later, we lose 60%. Uh, or lose uh, half of that 60% we've retained. The next day, we lose 70% of the 30%, which means that by the end of the day, we are two days later, we have only retained about 10.5%. My Lord, could you repeat that? <laughs> Pastor's being funny. The reason I shared that with you is because today I'm going to repeat, 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 and repeat. Because I am in hopes that at the end of this message, that 20 minutes later, you will have one thought that will be 
what do you call it, looping in your mind that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think or imagine. So the Preach first it, pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Tim. And it says in the main scripture, and if whoever is responsible, please put that up for me. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. I'm going to read it. And I'll need to have my phone nearby because I'm going to read something else. It reads, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church. We're the church of Christ and by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Now, let's just look at that. Or listen, again, listen to that. Or if it's on the screen there, read it with me. Now unto him. I promised you I'm going to repeat, repeat, repeat. There's another, another study that states that a person doesn't hear something and for the first time until you have said it to that person at least 11 times. And another study says that the minute you really hear something is when you're tired of hearing it. Because Praise all of a God. sudden, you're thinking, and Pastor says, I hear you. <laughs> Pastor's being real funny over here. <laughs> but the, the scripture is, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. Amen. Now, if I were to just stop here and say, this is, I'm not going to explain anymore. That would be enough because it says here that God is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond whatever you can ask or think in all ages for all times. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. It matters not what season you are in, in your life, it matters not what age you may or may not be. It matters not how long you have dealt with a situation. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think, or even imagine. Now, allow me to read some other translation because I'm telling you the same scripture and I'm repeating it. I want this to be like, okay, if she reads another translation about this scripture, we got it. That's how you're going to be. Bring it on. It reads, <laughs> the message states, God can do anything you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. Now, I didn't read that correctly. God can do anything more than you know. Oh. Did you hear that? God Amen. can do more than anything you know. What do you know about the situation that you're dealing with right now? What do you know about the children that you are dealing with, with the relationship you're um, uh, on your job or your neighbor or your whatever it may be? What do you know about it? 
Maybe you are one of the most insightful people and you're one of those persons who can just read a person like you're reading a book. Yet God can do more for you than you could ever possibly know about the situation. There is enough right there for everyone to be just jubilant that God has it covered because most of the time we judge all of our situations based on what we know and what we know is defined by limitations. Yeah. The room is so big. The car can only hold so many. The elevator can only hold so much weight. The bridge can only take so much stress. Uh, I can only eat so much. This container can only hold so much. This, uh, how can you sing? I can only uh, um, go sing three or four uh, notes higher than what I'm singing now. We have defined our lives by limitation. He's so tall. That's a limitation. She's, she's this. She's that. He's this. He's that. The children are there. The school can only um, house so many people. Every single thing that you describe, try it. Just think about it. If you try to describe anything, you will describe it by limitations. Amen. That's good preaching. Preaching. Yeah. Good. And the sad part about it is that when we go to God in prayer, we go to God in prayer with our limitations. I don't know how you're going to do it. Well, why are you asking him? Preach. I'm guilty of that as well. God, um, you uh, you know, I I need this. I need my life. I need this. But, you know, I'm this old. And now I guess I've mess missed all of my opportunities. Um, I, I made some dumb decisions. Um, you know, everyone nowadays say they made mistakes. But I'm just going to be honest with you. I've made some poor choices. You want to label it mistake? Amen. Okay. But I have made some poor choices. I have done some dumb things. And on top of all of that, I've made mistakes. And you know what? If I am not careful, when I go to God, I go to God with all of those things haunting me and making limitations to what God can do in my life. When the word says here that he is able to do more than I can imagine, um, more than I can request, more than my wildest dreams. Good. Dreams. Plural. That's good. And he and this, I love this. God can do anything more than you know, far more than you can could ever imagine. Our guests, our requests, are in your a request in your wildest dreams. And he does not do this by pushing you around. Mm, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. That's the message. He doesn't push you around. Look, you've got to do this. How many times when you're just like not doing well and, you know, someone is going to um, minister to you and then they just tell you, get over it. You know, and then they use that as a tough love. Tough is right. Love, I'm, I, <laughs> I have a little bit of an issue with we have to know that God is gentle. The Bible says in James that if you lack wisdom, if you lack understanding, go to God and he will not chide you. He will not correct you for not knowing. What he will do is do more than you can ask. 
Solomon asked for wisdom and God gave him riches beyond his wildest dreams. Is God the same God yesterday as and then as he is today? If so, then under this better covenant based on better promises with the Lord Jesus Christ himself and hold on to that thought because I have something to prove to you about this scripture about Jesus and that is that he has guaranteed this covenant this covenant of peace this covenant of happiness this covenant of healing this covenant of prosperity this covenant of uh, of a quick understanding uh, uh, of understanding and knowing the signs of times that's good. Amen. Thank you. I like the Weymouth. It says, now unto him, same scripture, Ephesians 3.20. Yes, I, I'm keeping my word. I'm repeating, repeating. Did I say I'm repeating? Because I'm going to repeat that I'm repeating. I'm repeating, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> now unto him who in the exercise of his power that is at work within us is able to do infinitely. That's a good word. That's a good word. Infinitely. There's no way to measure. And it says not just infinitely. It This word infinite has been placed as or used as an adverb, so it's modifying the next word. There you go. Infinitely. Beyond. In other words, there's no limit to how far God can do over whatever it is you're asking. You know, if you have your, your uh, smartphone or your iPad or paper, while you're listening to me, you can just start jotting down or mentally jotting down, what have I asked God for? Did I ask God for my children? God is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what I can ask or think. Amen. Did you ask Amen. for healing? God is able to do exceeding infinitely beyond what I'm asking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, and beyond your wildest dreams, how many times have you said something to someone and everyone else kind of go, <clears throat> yeah, right. Good luck with that. <laughs> so they don't believe you. But God said, I am able and will do beyond your wildest dreams. Praise God. Beyond our highest prayers or thoughts. The wand, is it wand or wane? W-A-N-D, that's wand. a wand. Didn't know the British pronunciation. Excuse me. Listen to this. Now to him who is able to do not only what I have asked, but things far beyond my asking or conceiving. By the reason of his power at work in me. Black Welders reads, now to him who is, who according to the power that is at work in us and Again, I'm asking you to hold on to that thought because an operative phrase is in this sentence. It says he's able to do, but it says according to the power that work is in us. Remember in the uh, King James, it says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. The power that is at work in us. Please stay with me. It reads in the Knox, he whose power is at work 
in us is powerful enough and more powerful enough to carry out all of his purposes in our lives, beyond our hopes, beyond our expectations, beyond our dreams. And if you need to know what the purpose of God is, please get my book because this talks about the purpose of God in your life. God is able, listen to this, this is so powerful. I hope this is blessing you. It's blessing. God, Amen. who is, whose power, okay. Awesome God. We sing awesome God. Awesome God. That's why I know I'm, I'm being a little stickler here. That's why I always reserve the word awesome for God, because in the English language, there are very few words that describe God. And awesome means he just he moves me with such awe and reverence and holy fear. That's why. I don't think there's any dog that's awesome and as wonderful as my husband is. And he does get me where I get dizzy and, and lightheaded when I'm around him. Still, I don't use the word awesome for him. And he's quite wonderful. He understands because he's the same way. God is the only one who can do this. He has this awesome power that is powerful enough. Are you are you getting it? I haven't I have not, I have Praise thank you. I have not said any other scripture but Ephesians 3 20 and 21. He his power is so powerful and it's a powerful enough, and then it says more than powerful enough. It's not just powerful enough. It's more than powerful enough. He's a more than enough God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is, Terry. He's Amen. more than enough. When Jesus became total sin and, and he shed his blood and he had to go into judgment, into hell and pay for Every single person who ever was born or even conceived. And, you know, I talked about that a couple of weeks back. The number is astronomical. And here he had to take all of that and his blood had to carry and cover all of that. And his blood was more than enough because he paid the last worthing and his blood covered everything because he was more than enough and he had yet more in his account that he raised up and he raised us up with him he's a more than enough god he's able to do whatever it is get your list and write down everything and when you pray and you're praying for your job and you're praying for your uh, family and you're praying for your community and you're praying for your health and whatever else it is look at that Put your request before God and on each one say, God, you are able to do exceeding abundantly beyond this, this that I am asking. That's what uh, Abraham did. Abraham said, the Bible says he, he took in account that he was a hundred years old and he took in account the age and barrenness of Sarah's womb. He said, Amen. okay, these are the issues, but he said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. He's faithful. If God said it, then God will do it. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. If God said it, he will do it. Amen. Wow. You know, it, I'm just going to read another, uh, not all of them, but I'm going to read uh, the Amplified and, and then the Way, which is WA, and I really need to read this. And then I, Pastor, how am I doing for time, sir? Well, uh, we're at the 40-minute mark. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to wrap this up. 
let me read it from the Amplified. And this, this is, Pastor, it does enjoy the Amplified Bible, but it's not one of his go-to Bibles. Let's put it that way. But he loves this passage of scripture in the Amplified. Let me read it and tell you why. Paul, in the uh, 13th or 14th verse, he starts out by saying that, you know what, I'm going to pray for you. Now listen to this. Remember I asked you to hold on to that point of Jesus and the power that's at work in you, if you recall that? Well, here's the connection. It's so often we take a verse of scripture out of context and we don't have the whole story. Listen to the whole story here. Paul said, I'm praying for everyone, every, all family in heaven and in earth who derives their name from God, the first and ultimate father. Listen to the prayer. And then you will be able to connect this with and God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think according to the power that is at work in me. Listen to this. Wow, the anointing is very, very strong here. Yes. It is. I pray that God grant you out of the richest, please listen, May God grant you out of the riches of his glory, excuse me, I really am just feeling very overwhelmed here, to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self. Now stop. And God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that is at work in you. Are you making the connection? Oh, this is good. Thank you. And he is to strengthen you and spiritually in energize with power. This is God energizing you with power through his spirit in your inner self. Listen to this. It's being modified here in the Amplified or it's being amplified in your inner self, indwelling your innermost being and your personality. Whew. So now here it goes. Here's the connection. This is pastor's favorite translation of this scripture. And I'm asking God to strengthen you with his power and energizing you so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. And may you having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, you may be fully capable. Uh oh. Whew. You may be fully capable of comprehending all, with all saints, God's people, the dimensions, the multiple dimensions of God's love. That is the width, the length, the height, the depth of his love. And not only that, experiencing all of these different dimensions, but you will be able to fully experience that amazing endless love and come to know practically for yourself through your personal experience, the love of Christ. That which surpasses mere knowledge without experience that you may be filled up. Listen, now this, I hope will knock the socks right off your feet. If not, Okay, they, then apparently they're on too tight. <laughs> Here it says that God will fill your being throughout your entire being so that the fullness of God, so that you will have the richest experience of God's presence 
completely in your lives that you'll be completely filled and flooded with God himself. Wait a second. I'm going to read this again. And that you may come and know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself, now unto him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than we will dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams according to his power power that is at work in us. What power was he talking about? The power of the love of God fulfilling every part of your being. Didn't you see that? Sure, that's good. Amen. It's good. Good. And may God fill you up and give you a knowledge of his love. Give you such a fulfillment of the love of Christ. How many more minutes do I have, Pastor? Many more. Well, I'm going to take a few more minutes here because it's important for this, I believe. God. We'll give you more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. You know, if, if in the Old Testament they could stop the sun and, and have a longer day, then, uh, well, here we can do it, I suppose, in the, oh, did you hear what I just said? I said suppose, and I'm just here preaching, and God can do exceedingly, but you see, I too need this message. I am just as human as the next person and I have to correct myself and I have to tell myself, you know, I have to say to myself, Loretta, that was not right. And many times I'll have to ask for crop failure because I don't want some of the things I say to produce any kind of harvest. So if you're Amen. with me on that, <laughs> it's just thank you, God, for a crop <laughs> oh me, oh my, for a crop failure. And I know even then you can do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. If you recall, I said earlier in this, uh, the beginning of my message that I have been haunted by poor choices, um, mistakes and whatever. The Bible says, even if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. That's what God says, I can do all and will do all that you need in your life beyond anything that you can ask. Now, let's just quickly go through these words. So just in case you just didn't believe me here, I'm going to read it. It says, God is able. That's dunamis. Some people call it dunamis, but it's spelled D-U-N-A-M. AI and it is affinity. It's it's the ability of God. Affinity meaning that this is his nature, his liking. This is what he does. This is who he is. He'll never change. He will do this because this is his personality. He who comes to God must believe that God is, that God is love, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I hope this is blessing you. Sure. The word says he's able to do. That word means a prolonged performance. That little word there in the Greek means when he starts throughout all ages, all times, if God has ever started working in your life, then he has continued it and he will continue until he brings it to completion. Oh, 
I don't care if you think that the promise God gave you when you were two years old, three years old, whenever you were the age to understand, the minute God spoke to you is the minute God began to work that in your life. And he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power of God, the love of God that's fulfilling every part of your being. Now, here's where it gets interesting. I said that the uh, scripture, and pastor, please get ready to come. The scripture says that you will know the love in all the dimensions. Well, what are all the dimensions of your life? What makes up you? All of the dimensions of God's love permeates all of the dimensions of your being. It's the parts that you know and parts that you don't know. And he's doing now, even as you're listening to me, he's doing exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to his power that is at work in you. I'm almost done. The word exceeding, as we've already said, means far above and and um, just over and above. But this word here where it says, and I really have to bring this in. I asked Pastor Larry a question the other day, a couple of days while I was doing my study and what have you. And I said, when we pray for something, now keep just keep your seatbelts on and put your stones down. When we pray about something, we've been taught, many of us who have been indoctrinated into certain uh, movements of faith, or, uh, movements, that you pray for certain things for just one time. And then other things that involve people, you know, because they're having to do with their will, you pray, you have to pray multiple times. So, couple of questions for you. I'm, I'm not telling you to cast your, your beliefs. You are, you are, you have the right to believe however you want. But if you're just, if you just prayed one time for something, how's that working? I mean, it's paid one. Why is it we can only pray for something one time, but we can complain about that very same thing over and over and over again. Preach. Preach it. Preach it. Preach. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> Brother Tim, thank you so much. And what do you have in your life? You know, they talked about you can only pray once for a car, once for a house, once for clothes, once for this, once for that. Would you tell me is there anything in your life that hasn't involved someone else? Someone else had to give you a car or give you a job so you can buy that car. Someone, someone else had to um, bless you with uh, food on your table. Someone else had to give you uh, your clothes, whether they gave you a job or gave you a gift of money. What in your life has not has not involved someone else? A little critical thinking here. If we are to pray multiple times for anything that involves someone else, then that would cover everything in our lives. I know you're quiet. You're swallowing. Well, the word ask. God said, I am able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask. And that word ask is in the Greek word, G, uh, Greek 154 is A-I-T-E-O. And, and the definition is to ask, to beg, to call, to crave, to desire, to demand. Now, begging... You don't just, begging is a repeated thing, is it not? Mm -hmm. And this word here is the word that the Holy Spirit 
chose to use, and it's this. I am able to do for you exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask. I don't care how many times you ask, how many times you beg, how many times you cry. You have to know I will do it more than you could possibly ask. And that word there is to beg, to stay before God. Now you are still saying, well, you know, that's just one. Well, then how about Matthew 7, 7 through 11, when Jesus talks about the widow and the unjust judge, he says that here, he said, or not in, uh, that's not the widow. This is uh, the other one where it says, ask and, and seek and knock. In Matthew 7, 7 through 11, it says, ask. It's the same word, this word here that Jesus is saying, these are Jesus' words, and Jesus was not under the old covenant until he got on the cross and became sin. Before that, he was, as we should be, the people born of the Spirit. And he said, ask, and you'll receive. That word is the same word that's in uh, Ephesians 3.20, he said, ask, beg, call, require, uh, uh, insist. And he said, indeed, it will be granted to you. He says, knock, that means, and I love this word, knock. This word knock means, uh, in the Greek is K-R-O-U-O, and it's a verb, and it means to strike hard. And you know what the word, that uh, the definition? To wrap. You know, <laughs> you know, if you talk about these kids with their the rapping, but if you think about they're they're hitting the words constantly, boom, 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 boom. They're just shooting the words out. That's what it is. Just rapping, rapping before God, getting his attention. And Jesus said that you keep on doing that. And then in the uh, I believe it's Luke. Jesus talked about the widow and the unjust judge, and he said that because of her importunity, because she kept coming before God, and then if you read it, and after he talks about that parable, he said, will the son of man find such faithfulness in the earth when he comes? Woo! This is good. Amen. You Praise have to God. just get to the place. I don't care. So someone says, well, you already asked. Well, I'm going to ask again. And I'm going to ask with more fervor. I'm going to ask with more passion. I'm going to ask with more strength because I know God is able to uh, grant me more than I can ask. Did I not tell you, Pastor, please come. Did I not tell you that I would repeat one scripture and that one scripture is that God is able to do exceed, oops, excuse me. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. You did tell us you were going to repeat it and you kept your word. And I believe, I believe I've got it. I think on the 10th time it got <laughs> locked in there. Maybe they love us back. Amen. Wow, wasn't that great? God is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond anything you could ask or think. And I know you're like me. You can ask big and you can think big, but God can top that. Praise God. So uh, be a big thinker. Be a big dreamer. Dream big dreams. And, and with God, everything's possible. With God, everything's possible. And we need to recognize that he is infinite in his power, his authority, his ability. And we need to appeal to that infinite reservoir of power and blessings that he has in store for you and me. We need to tap into that. Amen. Praise God. And one way to tap is to rap. <laughs> and just, I, I fix a lot of things by knocking on them. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> I guess that's in the old days. You know, we had a television that was always going to Oh, you slap those rabbit ears. <laughs> if you do what you're doing, you can hit that thing and jar something back into place. So, or those bending machines kick it real, real hard. <laughs> I'm rapping. I did my own word study on that uh, scripture out of Matthew, and it says, ask and keep on asking. And that literally means that. Ask and keep on asking, knock and keep on knocking. Seek and keep on seeking. And uh, I had to correct something with Pastor Loretta asking that question because uh, I had just, I don't know, I'd heard it 
I repeated it, sounded good. Well, uh, and, and I had to correct my thinking. And I thought, yeah, I, I'm a word guy. And I've never seen anywhere in the Bible where it tells us to pray one time. Now, granted, when you pray in faith, it's going to happen. But uh, sometimes the, the, the knocking and praying, this is my opinion, isn't just to get God's attention because he knows everything. It, it's to look within ourselves. Amen. Dig a little deeper inside of ourselves and, and ask a little more sincerely and, and keep rephrasing that until we get it right. Praise God. And that's when things will happen. Because they will Praise God. You know, Pastor? Uh, thank you for bringing that up, Pastor. Uh, did we get someone? Did someone try Is to get Is Pastor our... Larry's mic on? Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. I just wanted to mention that in Colossians 4, 2, it says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Praise God. That's Thank good. you. That's good, Tim. That's right on the mark. Praise God. So there's nothing wrong with asking and keep on asking with the aim that you're going to get results. Praise God. Maybe you just haven't convinced yourself yet. And if if asking and repeating helps you become convinced in God's awesome power and willingness uh, an infinite supply that ask again and ask again. I I uh, I come at things a lot of different directions. So the Bible talks about the multifaceted wisdom of God, multifaceted. I was talking to a scientist one day. He was a, a physicist, and I said, you know, I uh, I'm an artist, and we deal with three dimensions, and I know time is a dimension. That's four dimensions. I said I read in a scientific article that there may be 11 dimensions. He said, how about 11 million? How about infinite dimensions? Wow. And coming from a, a physicist, that really impressed me. Wow. Just, there's no, there's no way to contain or put a limit on God. Uh, if he lived in a three-dimensional world or a four-dimensional world, um, he could be limited himself. But he's not limited church there's no limitations don't hold back i mean go big go big go big or go home is well, that what they no. say bigger, bigger. Bigger. <laughs> bigger. well let me pray for everyone who's listening to this this is one of those messages that you're going to remember tomorrow and the next day and the next day because you only have to remember one thing. God is able to do exceedingly, uh, exceeding abundantly above anything you ask or think by the power that's at work in us. Now, and that's it. Thank you for making that connection. Father, yes. thank you for blessing everyone. If you can, raise your hands. Father, every one of us need more, want more, and we can have more than ever before. We need to think big, ask big, and expect big things to happen. You're a big God. You've got infinite power. You have infinite ability. We will not limit you with our unbelief. We're going to open up the floodgates of your power to come into our lives, your limitless power. Thank you right now for blessing everyone and take the limits off of God in their life. Let them think big, believe big, and receive big in Jesus' name. Now, the first thing, amen, that, amen. The amen. First thing that uh, you need to go after, if you don't have God in your life, then you do have limitations. You are limited in almost every area of your life. But when Jesus comes into your life, those, those limitations are removed if you will allow God to remove them. So I'm going to pray right now for everyone to, to get into this limitless God through Jesus. That's the only way to get there. There's the, I'll argue with that. Uh, I'm, I'm not a very dogmatic person, but when it comes to this, there's no other way to the Father except through Jesus. There's no other name or authority under heaven or on earth whereby anyone can be saved except Jesus. And I want you to be saved. So you're going to have to do it this way. In Jesus name, if you want to reach God the Father, you got to go through the door. And Jesus said, I'm the door. So Amen. let's pray this prayer together. Say, Father, Father, Father 
Father, I want to come to you. I'm, I, I come, come to, to you. you. I want to enter into this limitless place that you've created. I want to enter this limitless place that you've created. I'm coming through the door. I'm coming through, through the door. door. You're my door. You are my Jesus, door. you're my door. I'm not looking for another door. I'm not looking for another door. I'm not looking for another door. I'm not the door. I'm asking you. I'm asking, I'm asking, you. Asking, you. I'm asking you. Allow me to come to God, my Father. So allow me to come to God, 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 my Father. Father. Receive eternal life. To receive to eternal life. life. Eternal life. And limitless blessing. Amen. 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 You are without limitations. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have no restrictions. God has is not holding you back or holding you down. So remove the limitations. Think big, believe big, receive big in Jesus' name. I receive. Amen. 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 Well, it's been very good. Thank you, Pastor Loretta. If you enjoyed that message, let's uh, let's thank the Lord with hand clap. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. It's a wonderful Praise job. Great teaching. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we're going to move into communion, and uh, I believe Javier is leading us in communion, and after that, an offering, and after that, afterglows. Thank you so much for being with us today. We love you, and if you'll stay with us for a few more moments, Communion is is important. It's one way that we take the limits off. Yes. Yes. Uh, communion will do that if you do it right. And and stick around for the offering. And you on Facebook and YouTube and other platforms, um, go ahead and bless Z Church. It'll bless you. Amen. Uh, well, now we are going to commemorate, to remember to celebrate what the, uh, God did for us in his infinite love, that he sent his son so that he could die for us, go to hell for us, pay all our sins for all humanity, the past, now, or in the future. So he's uh, Jesus Christ's body was beaten, was broken, so that we could make, we make uh, complete, we are made complete, and we are made healthy. By his stripes, we were cured, we go, we are turned healthy. So let's remember that part about his body and eat the bread. And by that infinite love, God shed all his blood. And now we remember with the cup, the blood that Jesus shed for us. Blood that make us uh, the justice of God. God that make us uh, the son and daughters of God. And this is liquid love. This is uh, light, liquid light. And it cleans us completely, and so we can stand confidently in front of the Father. Let's celebrate that. So every time we eat this bread and we take this wine, we remember that, we celebrate that, his great victory, the victory that he acquired for us. So let's get together and see. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Javier, now let's honor God with our tithes and offerings. Praise God. Well, thank you, Javier, and thank you, Pastorita, for your for your message. Exceeding abundantly above and beyond what we can ask for. Um, this tonight's tithing verse comes from Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up 
for the righteous. My grandfather from both sides uh, followed and served, my grandparents from both sides followed and served God while they were alive. It feels good to know, it feels to go know, it feels good to know that they created enough wealth to pass on to my siblings, my cousins, and myself. Uh, when you are a tither, your children's children will benefit from it. And you're thinking, how am I going to do that for my child or my children or grandchildren? Believe in God. He's going to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond what he can ask for. But when they do that for me or for my cousins, it also sets the example of preparing and leaving something for, the, uh, for my future generations. Tithing is not just about you. It is about you and setting up your future generation. When you follow God, the wealth of the wicked will come to you in due season. God will make certain of it. So right your ship by tithing today. The giving information is on zchurch.life. God bless you as you give. I have a few announcements before the Afterglow begins. Please visit our website, zchurch.life. You'll find the Z Church blog there and all our past services, and they'll encourage you in your walk of faith. You'll have a good time if you just keep going through the website. You'll find things you'd be surprised. Some great poetry, great uh, blogs. It's really a lot of fun. If you go to the Divine Connections tab there, you can leave a prayer request. You'll also find the Zoom links for our Zoe group meetings. You can contact us on the website if you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team. There are many opportunities available, and there's a place for you. We also encourage you to join Pastor Larry on his Your Good Life devotional on Facebook at 7 a.m. Pacific Time weekdays. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is Chris. On Zoom, if you'd like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. If you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please let our moderator know, and they'll bring your question into the discussion. We also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. And now it's time for the afterglow. Chris? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Sharon. Uh, what a wonderful, powerful message. Um, of course, I don't remember what it was. But, uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> it really, it really <laughs> spoke to me. <laughs> That's I, perfect. I thought everybody would enjoy that. <laughs> um, um, it, but it, it, how, how true that is. We need to constantly remind ourselves 
of what God has done for us and who we are in Christ. And that's where renewing the mind comes into uh, comes into play. Uh, renewing the mind. That's that's. I'm reminded of um, Kenneth Hagin when he said, "Renewing the mind is like combing your hair every morning. It has to be done. You have to remind yourself of who you are." And that's uh, and when and when I read the Word, um, the apostles were big on that. Peter was big on that. He said, as long as I'm in this temple, I consider it my job to stir you up by remembrance, right? Um, otherwise, you, you fall back into sin. And when, when I came back to God, it was like, well, God, God can't forgive me. I've done so many bad things. And then I read uh, Peter when he talked about, you know, dogs going back to their vomit. And that's what I had done was going back to my vomit. And I thought, well, it was hopeless. You know, I'm lost forever. And then I realized that he was talking about these people hadn't reminded themselves of who they who, who they were. You have to constantly stay in the word and remind yourself of who you are. And and um, um, and John too. Uh, I think it was First John, right? He he says, uh, he, what, "What did he say?" He, um, let, let me take a quick look here. Uh, My little children, these things I write unto you. In other words, I remind you uh, so that you sin not. Right. We have to constantly be, be reminded. And, and I, I, I notice that when I spend and when I don't spend a day or two in the word, the flesh has its own memories and it brings up things from the past. Right. The flesh has its memories. And 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 but when I when I open the word, joy comes from um, the scriptures. Right. And it, it's like the Holy Spirit's waiting. He wants to teach you. And all this joy comes out of the scriptures. You simply opening the word and reading a verse or two is like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, that's who that's who I really am. So, um, and and like we have to constantly remind ourselves. I tell my students, um, you make my job so easy because all I do is spend the entire hour reminding you of what I had just taught you. And I know my friend Javier in Peru, he has an easy job teaching math. All he has to do is remind them constantly um, what he had just taught them that day or the day before. It's a uh, teacher's easy job. All you have to do is remind everyone, and uh, and that's that's my um, two two bits. So anybody, is, did anybody have uh, anything to say? I know I'd like to hear from um, Javier in in, in Peru. Um, Certainly, have something to say. Yes, I agree completely as a teacher. Uh, I normally review the study programs and they have this thing they call the spiraling, that you teach the students something when there are, I don't know, seven graders. Then you teach them again when there are eight graders. And you teach the same thing again when there are nine graders. Uh, and so by repetition and repetition, Finally, when they get uh, to have this long exam in which they cover all that they've seen in three years, they can remember better. And another thing, uh, emotions. Normally, our mem I understand that our memories are fixed in our brains uh, due to uh, a center that we have, I think it's called the pineal gland, not so sure, that when you have a strong emotion, associated with a memory, you remember it much, much better. And it's better that that emotion is love or it's joy. Uh, it's written that, uh, that our strength is in the joy that we have in God. So when we have joy being together with God or learning about something in his word, it, 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 it helps our memory to fix that. That's what I wanted to share. Amen to that. That's so true. Anybody else? I got something. Yes, Joseph. Um, so when Pastor was talking about the door and Jesus is the door, I got a quick testimony. I had a coworker who had a brother who was dying of liver cancer. Um, he was getting experimental medications. And then at one point, the family, he decided to just give up and just pass on. So his whole family went to go 
to their, uh, I guess they have a, a family home in Montana or something like that, where all the family came to be with him. And um, he, he, he basically passed away over a week's time and everybody was there. But um, when everybody got there, somebody brought the book, uh, and he's a spiritual man, but he wasn't Christian. And somebody brought the book, Heaven is for Real. And he had heard about the book. And when he saw it, he's like, hey, is what is this? Is this book? Um, and they were talking about it. And he said, I want to read that book right there. I've heard about this book. I want to read this book right here. Heaven is for Real. So they gave it to him. And he kind of, and he was reading it over the course of the week. And as he, um, and on his last day, he was, he was dying and he was in and out of consciousness. He was in and out of consciousness. And at one point, everybody's at his bedside. He said, he said, there's a, there's a, there's a hill, a grass hill. And he's seeing this grass hill. And, and he says, I, I see myself. I'm, I'm walking up this grass hill. I'm walking up this grass hill. And then, and then he was in and out of consciousness, and he said, now there's a door. There's a door on the top of the hill. And, they, and he's like, what do I do? And he says, I'm at the door. He's like, you know, in and out of consciousness, I'm at the door. They said, walk through it. He knocked, he walked through the door, and he passed away. Mm-hmm. And that, that, the door reference just oh. brought that to me. And you know he accepted Christ when he read that book. Mm-hmm. That's just, that's Jesus. There's no way. That's just, yeah, so that that was the testimony, so, yep. All right. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen. Anybody want to step out and talk about, talk about their um, deteriorating memories? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, we're we're human, you know, so, yes, Maria? You you reminded me about um, cellular memory, and I've yeah, heard a lot that? of I, I've heard a lot of testimonies and and studies about that the memories are not just stored on our brains, but also on every cell of our being. And I've heard about um, organ donations that afterwards the person has um, starts to have memories, strange memories uh, that they didn't know about, images, dreams, um, reactions, actions, um, strange to them, that when they investigate the person that donated the organs and maybe how they pass away and their story, it belonged actually to the person that, that had that organ before. And, and, and we oh. do get, yeah, go ahead. I've heard that. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and there's a, there's a lot of testimonies of, of that, that we, we, we store memories now it, it would be good. And then to have that hope that above our memories, uh, above our past, God can do much more. That, that, that we have gone through, that, that we would imagine that even our bodies will be able biologically to reach out to, to uh, above beyond natural circumstances. Uh, uh, either he is God or, or we're lost because if we're limited to our own ability, then there, there's a lot that, that is just impossible. Right? Second Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that having in all sufficiency, in all things, at all times, you may abound in every good work. We, we need something that has to go beyond, above and beyond ourselves. Because this is too much limitation. It is constant within you, around you, just the natural circumstances. If we will be limited for natural circumstances then we're pretty much lost <laughs> yeah amen to that we, yeah. we you know our, our our flesh limits us but we are not our flesh and i'm reminded of something that jesse duplantis um said uh, he was out at a restaurant with his wife and he asked for water and the waitress for some reason bought it brought a glass of scotch right and it looks like water 
So he, oh. he, he, he took a mouthful and realized what it was, and and he he kept it in his mouth, and his his wife was saying, "Spit it out, spit it out," right? <laughs> and so so he did, and but he he remembered the taste. He had given up drinking when he be, he became a Christian. He used to you know he used to drink like a bottle of whiskey a day, something like that. And he his, he he says he said your flesh remembers. It remembers, right? So it has its own memory, um, which is why we, it, you know we have to spend time in the Word, you know. And Paul, when he when he was writing to the Corinthians, right that that was a church that was steeped in in you know it was it, was, it wasn't you know very very godly, right? It was it was there were some things going on there that uh, Paul had gotten wind of, and but the way he wrote the letter, right? You that, that's you know. You, talking about uh, who they are in Christ and things like that, right? So um, we have to constantly remind ourselves. So, yeah, our flesh, we are not our flesh. I, have to, I remind myself of that every day. So we, I am not my flesh. That is not who I am. Yeah. No, we're pretty much uh, reprogramming ourselves, right? Yeah, we, yeah, we are reprogramming Always. ourselves. That's right. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Christine, I think you had something to say. I don't can't hear you. I didn't, but I can. Oh, you did? Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm just sitting here, Chris. But um, I will just um, earlier got to give me a word, and I wrote it down, which I never do. So if this is for someone that's still here, then um, I'll read it so that you can take it. But mm-hmm. keen insight. And precision of vision is coming forth in this time to my children who revere me. And I'm making a way to the new, moving you to what is now for you in the new level at a new position. Promotion belongs to those who obey me. And I will shield you and I will direct you. So just trust that it is so. So that was the word God had, and I was thinking about it because God is doing a lot in my prayer life. I'm pressing in to have back a lot that I've been robbed of. And when she was reading it um, in the Living Bible, what it says is, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So when we're thinking about promotion, being moved up, going to another level, and you're concerned that I don't know if I can do that. I don't know that I'm able. You don't have to concern yourself for that because it's his mighty power working in us that causes us to be able to move up to that next level and that next place. And all we have to do is obey him and worship him and trust him. And so that's what I got out of today's message is just do what you know to do concerning your father in heaven. And he's certainly going to cause you to be able to do far beyond what you think. And with the things he's been showing me this week, he just kept saying, the battle is not yours. It is mine. And I got this. So I received that word. I do receive it too. Yeah, you I have to share. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to let go. <laughs> Great word. Great Praise word. God. Amen. Okay. Is, uh, how are we doing for time? Oh, it's, when, when does this end? Uh, it me... doesn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure about the, I don't know anything about the time limits when it comes to afterglow. So. Give it about 15 more minutes at least. Yeah. So, so many people okay. wake up and speak up. Yeah. We got some yeah. talkers on here. You Could just you read that again? Could you read that word again? Yeah, read that again. Serious. Yeah. Okay. Keen insight and precision of vision is coming forth in this time to my children who revere me. And I'm making a way to the new. Moving you to what is now for you in a new level of position. Promotion belongs to those who obey me. And I will shield you and I will direct you. Just trust that it is so. 
Thank That's you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise I'm God. receiving it. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's for all who are pressing into God. God is moving us all into a new place to go Amen. up higher. And if you're not hearing it out there in the atmosphere and in what God is speaking through men of God, 23 and 24 are supposed to be so powerful in Christ that if you are not preparing right now to step over into it, you are going to have a shock to your system because God is just about to burst forth with some powerful and magnificent things that we have never seen before. So you got a couple of weeks left. Get yourself pumped, primed, and ready and step over by faith into that new level because God is going to do it. He's bringing it. It's it's on. Wow. Amen. Good. Amen. Good. I heard people that people that work out a lot talk about muscle memory, you know. Yeah. And so it's, I think it, there's probably more memory going on in us, like, like Maria, you brought out and uh, then, then we know. So praise the Lord. This is yeah, good. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, to Christine, I'm, you know, everybody's taking that word, but I have a, that word is so on point of what happened this just yesterday talking. So I talked to the medical directors of of my old job. And, um, they were, I want to go back to my old job. I want to go back to what I used to do, but the, every single person that I've talked to is like, you don't want to be director, man. You want to be the director? Let's be the director. And I was like, I'm, I just want to go back to what I used to do. <laughs> you know? And then I said, but I told him, I said, I'm just, tr- I don't want to jump in the hot tub yet. I just want to put my toes in first. <laughs> and so it's just funny that you're, it's not funny. It's your, your word is just so on point. So I just leave my mind open, but we'll yeah. see. We shall see. I got a testimony coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're agreeing with you. Yes. Yeah. I was it's human nature, about- isn't it? Yeah, I was thinking yes, about cellular, cellular memory. Um, it kind of helps explain when the amputee still feels uh, the missing limb because it's know. actually up here. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But, wow. That's true. And the memory of the Holy Ghost who can bring back a scripture that you haven't read in like 20 years. And yet there it is alive coming out out of your spirit. And it's like, yes. God, that memory is the best memory. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. I know David talked about musing in prayer, what, what God did. Well, I remember I killed the lion. I killed the bear, you know, and he was ready. He reminded right. himself and reminded God. And uh, built his faith that way to rehearse the deeds of the Lord is goes into all of our memory. That's how we write those things on the tables of our heart is with our tongue, with our mouth. It writes it in every cell of our body. Praise the Lord. And I know I can't be the only one who's visual for me. Pictures do it. Mm -hmm. It's like when I'm in prayer, God shows me a vision. That's something Mm -hmm. I'm never going to forget. And now that I'm an artist, it's like when I paint, I'm painting things that I remember from somewhere at some point in some time of my life. And it's just, you can do that deliberately, like to take this word, write down what is important to you, but then draw a picture Mm -hmm. to go with it to focus on that will cause you to absolutely remember it because it works. I'm like that everywhere. Uh, if you're trying to teach me something, a training, I need to see the the, the themes. I need to see the, the pictures. I need to see it. The, when I am ordering something in the menu, it cannot be just words. I need to see something. How does it look like? Exactly. That's right. I remember when my youngest daughter was long, young, she was having a really hard time in school, probably about the third grade, and she was failing some things. And then um, one day her teacher, they did a skeleton and had them write in the names of all the bones and and then to remember what they could remember. She remembered absolutely every single bone in the body because she saw the picture. Mm-hmm. Like the teacher just clicked. It's like, 
Oh, I got you, girl. I know what you need. You're a visual. So from then on, she did extremely well, at least in his class. <laughs> That's great. Praise God. I, can I make a comment? No, Chris? my. Yes, yes. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Gail. I, I'll, I'll um, go to you. I was just thinking my husband, pastor, pastor of the church, and he often used illustration messages. Um, and so did Pastor Edge. Um, at the Easter time, she had this large lamb. Um, it's a stuffed animal. I still have it. I'm never getting rid of it. Um, but she would use it as an illustration in her message. She'd set it on the altar. She had a big, huge bowl underneath it, underneath the, like the neck. And she would take a huge butcher knife and act like she was cutting the neck of the the lamb and she would you know use as an illustration that the blood would pour out then they would Mm. take that and rub it over the door the doorposts you know so that when the 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 angels went by that they would pass by because there was blood sprinkled over the doorpost Mm. you know and even 20 years 30 years later you can go back and talk to people that was in our service and they'd say, I remember that lamb, you know, and how that she would cut and the blood would run. You know, we 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 hear things over and over again, like Pastor talked about today. But when you see something visual, you know, you you automatically remember, remember it. You know, it's put back in the back of our minds. And uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to share the, you know, the visual of of seeing items in sermons. We, I, we don't see that very much. You know, ministers get up and preach and just talk. But if you can see a visual of something, I remember also she, at Easter time, you know, at the crucifixion Christmas, she had one of the young men in our church. We had a big, huge cross she had built, and she actually tied his hands onto the cross and had him stand there. You know, you know, we hear about Jesus being on the cross, but to actually see somebody on a cross, you know, we got that visual and she had before sermon service painted like blood on his clothes. You know, we uh, to this day I still remember seeing that young man up on that cross. Yeah. That's going to stay with me forever. So I just want to share that. That's wonderful. Yeah, you know, God gave Abraham the visual of the stars of the sky and the sand uh, for his his descendants. Can you imagine every night he'd look out? Abraham, Abraham, and he'd see the the stars, and it was a you know a reminder of God's promise to him. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment on something that Pastor Loretta said today that I thought was really profound: is that we describe or uh, explain things by limitation. I had never yeah. really thought of that. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's you know, so I, true. I, I was really struck by it. I yeah. thought, now I'm really going to listen to what I say. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Yeah, because that that was intense. I was like, "Wow, wow, we really do that, you know." Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. here we have a limitless God, and we're we're describing everything by limitation. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that was really good for me. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah, and the, the comment on crop crop failure, praying for oh, crop failure. Mm-hmm. You know, I had never great. heard that before. So yeah. that was uh, that was really good too. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? One last person, or I just love, I just rest? love, I just love Pastor Loretta's. Uh, how can we pray for pray for something one time? But we'll complain about exactly. it. Exactly. Oh, that, <laughs> that was perfect. Was so that was beautiful. That was, that was perfection. That was so <laughs> That's why you need to pray all the time to counteract all that other junk you're saying. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. I always say, 
if you pray as much as you worry or if you pray as much as you complain, you won't have nothing to worry about. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other thing is you can't pray and complain at the same time. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I like that comment too. And Pastor Larry was talking about um, the come come uh, at things at different directions, you know, because I think when we're praying and we're going in again over something, pressing in more, we can, you know, we'll, we'll, it, it's expanding, uh, expands us on the inside of what we can believe for and receive as we go in there. We need to, you know, yeah. Be able to just see it better and and grab hold of it and receive it and sometimes just just praying about it more gives us that capacity to receive it. You know, you're you're believing God. You're yeah. going over the scriptures that you're standing on and you're putting it out there and it's expanding you. Yeah. Hey, you're not persuading God. You're persuading yourself. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's what renewing the mind is all about. It's persuading yourself what you know that God loves you. Javier. Yes, I agree with that. I was about to say that it's it's a matter of convincing yourself. So when you repeat, you convince and you convince and convince yourself uh, better, and you put God's thoughts instead of your thoughts of worry or limitation. That's why you've got to repeat it and repeat it. Uh, I think it's got something to do with renewing your mind and keep on meditating on his word. And also, hopefully, you're praying in the Holy Ghost while you're going over yeah. it. Yeah. And that yeah. just edifies you and makes, you know, it makes the big edifice of faith around you. <laughs> That's building yourself up on your most, most faith. faith seem to forget that scripture is about faith and praying in the Holy Ghost, most holy faith. So right, right, because what Amen. we want is a revealed um, knowledge, revelation knowledge, not just knowledge and mantras. We're not trying to do mental ascendment. We don't want to. Um, how do you say that? Like like self. Um. Uh, when you when you're trying to to get somebody's mind, ah, oh, self hypnotize you. Oh, yeah, all right. mm. we, we we don't we're not talking about that. We're talking mm -hmm. about getting into the revelation of the truth. Yes, above yeah, and the, beyond your own age, limitation. Yeah, even the new age people have their mantras. They say, you know, right. like that's you don't want that. That's not the way you yeah. want. It. I was just I was just thinking too that when we when you when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you remove the limitation of your vocabulary. Right. Yes. Right? yes. You you limit yourself with your phrase making and your your vocabulary. But once you start, you just like pow, exactly. pow. It's like I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's a, I think it's about time. Thank you, everyone, for making the afterglow glow. Um, <laughs> Amen. Anybody? Let's see. Uh, Elder Bob, would you like to uh, close us out in prayer? All right. Be honored to. Oh, thank you, our Lord, our God, for your infinite, mighty power working in us. I, I pray that you you prompt each one of us all week to be reminded of this message and to rehearse the elements of it. And to rehearse and remember the fact that there's power working in us that can do more than any situation we're up against or anything we face or anything we think about. And I'm just praying specifically that you remind each of us all week long in everything we face, everything we come up against to see it not according to the natural limits we have, but according to your limitless power and see what then should we see and say and think and believe and speak and do according to you and your power that works in us? We thank you. We we bless Pastor Loretta and pray that she has a wonderful blessed evening and dinner. Yes, and, and, and I thank you for all these brethren and all of those out there who will hear this message somewhere, someday. We pray you're, you're part of the body together with us, and we, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to thank say you everyone. thank you week. to everybody on Facebook and YouTube and everybody that watches. Uh, we would like to see you on Zoom. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Bob. Thank hey. you. Hey. And Terry, too, in a few days. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Be blessed, everyone. <laughs>